Hi guys, I'm Carly from Bell's Books and today I want to talk to you about quite a few books that I've had on my shelves for a long time that I've been meaning to read and haven't got around to. Now, this video could go on forever because there's quite a lot of them, but I've picked out a selection of 10 that I've had for varying lengths of time. I'm going to talk a little bit about them and then I want you guys to tell me if you've read any of these and if you would recommend me to pick them up during the summer because I'm looking for things to pick up in July and August that are quite summery or just good summer reads. So the first one I'm going to start with is one that I know is a good summer read. Uprooted by Nina Leon, Lyon. I've had this for ages. I think I picked it up when I went to Glastonbury or um, Cornwall, something like that. So this is a book about a woman on the trail of the Green Man. So she's going around, I think it's in Wales, or it might be all around the country, um, looking at the myths, legends and folklore associated with the image of the Green Man um, in Celtic history. So I'm really fascinated in this kind of stuff and I really wanted to read it since I finished Lanny because um, the character of Dead Papa Toothwort in Lanny is related to the Green Man. So this one really intrigues me. Now I can't work out whether this is, I thought it was non-fiction, which I assume it is because it talks about just her, her journey of going around and finding these icons of the Green Man in various different places. But it, like in the blurb, I'll just read you the back end of it. Um, so it says, Against a backdrop of mountains, forests, rivers and stone circles, a cult of the green man emerges as Nina explores his meaning and how he came into being. Meanwhile, in the woods from an overgrown Welsh railway line to leafy London suburbia, strange things are happening. Which leads me to think that it's not non-fiction. But, so I have no clue. Either way, I'm very intrigued and I want to read this. So, yeah, let me know if you've heard of it at all. Next, something completely different. Swimming Home by Deborah Levy. I've had this for a while, picked it up from a charity shop, and I know this is a good summer read because it is about a family that go on holiday to a villa, and when they get there, there is this exotic woman just floating languidly in their swimming pool. She is Kitty Finch. Um, and she sounds like a right tasty sort. Uh, so it's about their holiday and her interaction with them because she just hangs around. All seems a bit odd. Um, I know that Lauren from Lauren in the Books has recently read this and really loved it. I've heard lots of good things about it. It's only very short. It's like not even 200 pages. So I think this will be a good one and I would like to read this in the summer. So let me know if you've read it and what you think of it. Next, another short book. I have got The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. This is a dystopian novel. It's very short, again. And also, I, th I think it's told in vignettes. So, like, if I hold up, it's like really short little passages. This is a dystopian novel about um, a woman who has just given birth to her first baby and it's set in the future where there's been a lot of flooding. So we're under flood water by the sounds of it. Um... And I think it's just about them, this mother and child, kind of trying to make a life for themselves in amongst go what's happened, what's gone on. Now, I have met Megan. I did a poetry workshop with her at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. Um, and we did this lovely poetry workshop. So I've heard some of her poetry before and it's stunning. Um, so I know I'm going to really like her writing style. So yeah, this one I've been meaning to pick up for ages, I've heard lots of good things about it, and it's not very long, so I should really get to it very soon. Next, I have Outline by Rachel Cusk. This is the first of a trilogy, as I understand it. Um, it is about a woman that goes to Athens to teach a writing course, and it is about her interactions with all of the different people that she meets and their narratives. And I think it's about how all of those narratives intersect and intertwine. Um, that's what I've got from the blurb, but I also understand it's a little bit meta. So it's about storytelling and 
narrative in general but I'd like to know a little bit more about it so do let me know if you've read it but this is something that I was looking into for my research anyway because it sounds like something that I could potentially hit on for my um, my work because I'm looking at the way that books talk about narrative and stories and the way that we interact with them so yeah really keen to pick this one up also because she's published the other two and I want to read the whole trilogy so I need to get on with it next in a similar vein I have got Mural Sparks The Comforters now I picked this up because it was recommended by Ali Smith when I went to see Ali Smith at the Cambridge Literary Festival as one of her favourite Muriel Spark books. Do you know, I think I've only read one Muriel Spark, which is The Girl of S Girls of Slender Means. I haven't even read um, The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie or The Driver's Seat. Don't even go there, I know. They should be in this list as well. But this book says it's about a character who knows she is a character in a novel. Um, again, I don't know much about it other than that she's interacting with her fellow characters and they seem to be catholic converts and renegades from the faith so very interested in getting into this like i say i've got quite a few muriel sparks on my shelf that i haven't read so would appreciate feedback on that what's your favorite muriel spark what would you recommend would you recommend this next i've got a book that i bought ages ago in waterstones the Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. Um, now, I saw this mentioned recently again on another booktube channel, can't, which I can't remember. Um, but this is a, I think it's a children's book or young adult, and it's magic realism, gothic, set in the 19th century. It seems to be about the lives of three characters. Nath oh, no, Nathaniel Steepleton, who finds a gold pocket watch on his pillow and it saves him from an explosion in Scotland Yard. He tracks down the maker of the pocket watch, who is a lonely Japanese immigrant by the name of Kita Mori. And there's also Grace Caro, who is sneaking into an Oxford library, desperate to prove the existence of the, wait for it, I'm going to pronounce this properly, Luminiferous, before she's got to get married. Now, this sounds right up my street. I love gothic. I love things set in the 19th century. Love a bit of mystery. Magic realism. Yes, 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 yes. Why haven't I read this yet? I don't even know. Now, I know why I haven't read this one. It's The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I do want to read this. I have been meaning to read it for a long time. But would you look at the size of it? Man alive. Now, this is like... This is just shy of 900 pages and the print, you know, it's not large. So that's a big old book. But the reason I want to pick this up is because I think they have made a film of it. My friend Emma phoned me up the other day and she went, oh, I saw this really good trailer for a film. And she started to tell me, and she was like, there's this boy and his mum and they're going to a museum and there's an explosion. And I went, wait, I know what that is. It's the goldfinch. She went, yeah, how did you know? Because I know the premise, that's the premise of this book. A young boy and his mother go to uh, an exhibition at a museum. There's a big explosion. I think she dies. I think you find that early, early on. He steals a painting of the goldfinch. And then I think this book is about his life going forward because he's taken into um, a family that adopt him, I think, in New York. So, yeah, it's set in America. Um, other than that, I don't know much about it, but it's had a lot of praise. I really want to read it, but it's just the size is putting me off, that's all. But I would like to read it before I see the film, and I really want to see the film. Next up, Sight by Jesse Greengrass. This is a book, again, I bought a while ago because it's the hardback, which is about motherhood and considering motherhood. So that's why it appealed to me. Um, and also, so it's about this woman who is thinking about having a baby she's thinking about her relationship with her own mother but also it touches on lots of other um various things like medical history so it talks about the discovery of x of the discovery of the x-ray the development of psychoanalysis 
and the advancement of medical surgery. So it sounds like there's a lot going on in here through this story. Again, it's not a big old book, so it would be pretty quick to read. I'd appreciate your views on this, please, because it does sound very intriguing. Uh, next, I think this is probably a good summer one. Um, the Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. Again, heard lots of good things about this on Booktube. From what I understand it, this is a dystopian set on an island, I think. So three sisters are being brought up away from society because to be a woman is to is dangerous, which obviously is a commentary on uh, today's society. And um, it talks about how their parents, I think it's their father that wants to protect them because their bodies are not safe. And then some dudes rock up to this island strangers wash up by the sea and yeah so there's the threat of these men and what they're going to do to these girls um it does sound a bit kind of not ethereal but a bit strange and like there's something going on yeah i, I kind of want to know a little bit more about it i think before going in i think it'd be a good summer read but tell me if you've read it i am very intrigued by this one and lastly, well not lastly because I've got all these, but lastly for this video, I've got The Night Brother by the lovely Rosie Garland. Now, um, I have met Rosie, I did a workshop with her at a feminist writing conference, and I also met her at Wilderness Festival, um, where she signed this book for me. She's lovely, 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 a bloody lover. Um, and this book sounds right up my street so it says it's about two siblings Edie and Gnome. Gnome goes out at night and has all the adventures and Edie wakes up in the morning and she's like oh shit what just happened um and it's about the push and pull of Edie and Gnome and she gets sick of being waking up every morning being like exhausted because Gnome's been out all night something's going on there so I like this bit because it says it's an adventure about belonging and it pushes the boundaries of sexual and gender identity with echoes of Orlando and Jekyll and Hyde. What's not to love? Sounds brilliant. Now I did start reading this when I was at Wilderness after Rosie signed it for me. I read like the first chapter I think. I was like, ah, this is so good. And then because I was at a festival, obviously put it down and went off and did other things and then didn't pick it up again when I got home. Don't even know why would very much to like like to finish this off and it's a beautiful cover look at that stunning so those are the 10 books i have picked out for books i would like to read this summer that have been on my shelf for a very long time tell me if you've read any of them or if you want to read any of them give me your recommendations particularly on the muriel spark business because i do want to get to a muriel spark this summer because they're all very small so i know i could pack one of those in um, yeah, let me know. Talk to me in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye!